In this section, we will be developing an equation to compute the angle of twist of one end of the shaft with respect to the other end. Before we begin deriving the equation, note that V is a function of torque, the polar moment of inertia, and the shear modulus of elasticity. V is not a function of rho because the radius remains constant all throughout the shaft. In order to derive the formula for the angle of twist, we'll be needing the following equations. From the equation we developed on slide 6 from the first video, torsional deformation of a circular shaft, we already know shear strain is a function of the rate of change of the angle of twist. We'll also be needing the equation we developed on slide 10 from the previous video regarding the torsion formula. And finally, we'll be needing the Hooke's law. Before I start deriving the equation, I wanted to include all the equations I mentioned on the previous slide here. The first thing we'll look at is the relationship between shear strain and the rate of change of phi. Since we want to solve for phi, we'll rearrange the equation and isolate for d phi to obtain equation 1. In most cases, we won't be given the shear strain, and so we'll have to incorporate these equations as well. Notice how both the equations equal tau. Since we want to simplify these equations, we'll have to equate the equations together like so. In order to incorporate this equation into equation 1, we'll have to rearrange the formula and isolate for shear strain. As I previously mentioned, V is a function of T, G, and J, and so I can rewrite the isolated equation like this. Now this equation will be representing equation 2. Now that we've isolated for shear strain, we can substitute equation 2 into equation 1. Notice how our rho from both the equations cancel each other out. Since we want to solve for phi and our d phi, we'll have to isolate for phi by integrating the equation from 0 to L, where L represents the length of the shaft. We'll analyze the equation even further on the following slide. On this slide, we'll continue our analysis of the equation we derived on the previous slide. We'll accomplish this by identifying what the variables represent and its corresponding units. We'll be starting off with phi. Phi represents the angle of twist occurring within the shaft between 0 and L. The unit for phi is in radians. T represents the torsional moment at x. The unit for T is Newton times millimeters. The sign convention of T can be best represented using the right hand rule. The direction in which your fingers curl represents the direction in which V occurs, whereas your thumb will be used to determine the sign convention for the corresponding torsional moment. For this scenario, the torque is applied in the counterclockwise direction. If you curl your fingers along the same direction, you'll notice how the angle of twist is occurring in the counterclockwise direction. As a result, your thumb should be pointing away from the cross section of the shaft. We'll be using this as our positive sign convention. It's important to note, torque is only positive if your thumb is pointing away from the cross section of the shaft. Now let's consider a different scenario where we apply the same torque in the clockwise direction. Just as before, we'll curl our fingers along the same direction. You'll notice how the angle of twist is now occurring in the clockwise direction. As a result, your thumb should be pointing towards the cross section of the shaft. In this case, the torque would be considered negative because the thumb is pointing towards the surface of the cross section. Now we'll move on to the next variable. J represents the polar moment of inertia at x. The unit for J is millimeters to the power of 4. G represents the shear modulus of the material at x. The unit for G is megapascals or newtons over millimeters squared. And finally, L represents the length of the shaft, and the unit for L is millimeters. Depending on the geometry and the composition of the shaft, the equations may vary. If the material and the cross-section is uniform all throughout the shaft, and if there is only a single torque applied, then the following equation can be used instead. However, if you're in a situation where the shaft is not uniform, or if there are several torques applied, then you'll have to break up the shaft into segments and use this equation instead, where you'll have to find the sum of the angle of twist for each component. Now this concludes the video for the section regarding the angle of twist. 
In this video, we derive the formula used to solve for the angle of twist and its corresponding units. In the following video, we'll be doing an example for this section.